Hey, what's up guys? PK here. So welcome to another episode. Sorry I haven't been uploading much, but uh, a lot of things have been happening in my life. Come fall term, which is starting right now, I'm hoping to get to get into my regular schedule again. So this should make me upload on a regular basis. So crossing my fingers that everything goes smoothly. Um, had some problem with my uh, boat. Just like last time, the uh, had some uh, um, problem with the bearing again. It came off. So I had to spend some time to fix that, but that's all done now. Um, back on the road, and we are crabbing here today at Coos Bay again. It is uh, fall right now, um, just the beginning of fall, so which means crabbing is really, really good. Okay, guys, here are my pots. You have seen this before. I really like this pot because um, the crabs cannot escape from them. Once they go in, they can't get out. Versus, let's say, the crab rings, okay? The door opens up here at the top. Um, you put your bait in right there. And as you can see, um, a seal got inside my bait box the other day because I was using fish and he bent my door. Okay, and all my bait got out because uh, he stole it. So I'm, I'm gonna use chicken this time because they tend to leave the chicken alone. I got some drumsticks right here. And at the bottom, you can see right there, I have some rocks because I want to make the pots a little bit heavier so it doesn't drift in the tide. So I got four pieces of chicken legs right there. And I think I'm gonna put in a couple more. That's it right there, we'll call that good. I'm gonna tie a couple more right to the uh, bottom of the pot just to give it an extra smell. Okay, there we go, there's one. I'm gonna do one more. Now you're probably thinking, you know, if you tie it down there, couldn't they just take the bait and leave? Uh, they can take the bait, but they can't leave because as I said before, these traps are designed so that once they get in, they can't get out. It's a one-way street. Okay, just like that. So with this, I'm gonna zip tie that too. Because that door is all bent up, thanks to the seal. You can't blame the seal because, you know, they're just trying to survive too. Okay, that ought to do it right there. And we're gonna hook on the harness. This is a four harness that I got off Amazon. They're very useful. I recommend them because they make your life a lot easier. like that okay so that my first pot okay so let's do the second pot again I have rocks in the bottom of the bait box as well for this guy the rock is optional but I like to put it in there and because I want to make sure my trap does not drift in the tide Okay, I got four pieces in there. We'll call that good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, actually let's do a couple more. Because I'm just gonna lift it by one time. I got three piece, four piece of chicken leg left. I'm gonna tie two to the bottom. Okay. So I got two extra drumsticks tied to the bottom. Again, guys, those two drumsticks are completely optional. I just do things a little odd. I just wanted to smell as much as possible. All right, there's my harness. I'm gonna hook that guy on right there. Okay, the bait's in, the harness is on, and we're good to go. One main question I get is, when is the best time to go crabbing here on Oregon coast? And that time is starting right now. It is September. It is mid-September. And uh, it's going to be good all the way till December. Basically, you want to go crabbing when the month ends with an R. So September, October, November, and December. After December, it starts to slow down a little bit. And the next question is, when is the best time to go? When is the best tide? The best tide is usually the incoming high tide. But it just depends on where you crab. Personally, from me, I've caught crab um, at both tides, whether it's low tide, whether it's outgoing tide, incoming high tide, high slack. Um, here at Coos Bay, I have gotten 
very good luck at both tides, okay? But if you're crabbing on the, let's say on a crabbing pier, um, probably an incoming high tide is best, up to high slack. I want to say something about the rope. So when you use rope, you want to get these lead core ropes. These lead core, they sink to the bottom. Um, so they stay out of the way of uh, boat props. These yellow ropes, you, you probably don't want to use these for crab pots when you're crabbing in the bay because they float. And when a boat go near your uh, buoy, you know, the propeller might catch onto these ropes and, you know, cause a lot of problem. So you want to make sure you use these lead core ropes for crabbing in the bays. For these, if you want to crab on like a pier, crabbing pier, these are fine. So I find these uh, decoy clip to be pretty simple. <clears throat> Make your job a lot easier when tying the rope onto the uh, crab pot. You just open them up and just clip them right on like that. Okay, that won't come off. So see, 19 foot, drop it right here. <clears throat> There he goes. That's a second pot. <clears throat> so again, this clip is going to make it a lot easier with to, to tie the buoy onto your rope like that okay all right so there goes our second pot all right guys so now it's just a waiting game so we got pot number two right there pot number one is way over there so how long do I set it down because this is a crab pot and they can't escape I can set it down for as long as I want uh, normally I pick it up in about an hour to an hour and a half and while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna go fishing. Um, with the crab rings, it's different. The crab rings, you pick it up by 15 minutes at the most because the crabs can escape. But with these pots, you know, I feel a bit more secure. It's a one-way street for them. So while we wait, let's go fishing. Yeah, I got him. First fish, guys. Fish on, fish on. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, nice black. Mr. Black Rockfish. Woo! Little guy. We don't want him though. There we go. We want the bigger one. I didn't realize I was a fish. <laughs> there we go, guys. Third fish of the day. Oh, he's a good one. Holy cow, look at that. Now that is a black rockfish. I did not realize he was on there too. Yeah. Oh, woo. There we go. Just oh, barely hooked. Wow, guys, that is huge. Holy snap. Okay, this one. That be bigger than your biggest. Yeah. He is, wow. He's 18. He's about 18 and a half inches, guys. Look at that, 18 and a half. Well, guys, I just caught a really nice black rockfish. 18 and a half inches. I think he's my new personal best, but I did not bring a scale. So this guy doesn't count. He's huge. I would say about three pounds. So I'm gonna take this guy home. I'm not gonna release him. <laughs> so that was cool. Anyways, my time is up. We're gonna go pick up our crab pots and um, if there's any crab, we're gonna cook them. All right, let's do it. One tool that I use 
for uh, helping me um, grab the buoy. It's this little hook I made. It's this uh, ugly stick. I took the uh, butt part of it and I got this uh, bird feeder hook off Amazon and I taped it to the rod. So this gives me about a five foot extension hook to grab onto the buoy. Just makes it a lot easier from you know having to reach over the side of the boat where it gets a little bit too dangerous. Feels kind of light. Yeah, it's pretty light. Not a whole lot in here, but we got about two. Big ones too. Yeah, pretty good size ones. Maybe three. Oh, dang. Yeah, the lid came out, that's why. The what did? The lid popped out. Oh. Yeah, keep him there. I'm gonna grab him really quick. Grab the other one. He's not. Okay, so here we go, guys. Okay. So we have, I think we got one right here. This one, pretty sure it's a keeper. If not, he is very, very close. Yeah, he's a keeper. So that's number one for crab number, uh, so for pot number one. That is a male. So you can see that one is a male. See the tail on that guy is more round, so that's a female. And that one is more elongated, that is a male. So you can only keep male here in Oregon. Okay, so we'll let this little girl go. All right, here's another one. This one is a female, so we'll let her go. And here is a really big male. Check out that, holy cow, man. I think the radiation from Fukushima has arrived in Oregon. You think? Look at the size of this dungeness. Wow. That's a nice one. Big one here too. Yeah, that's a hard shell. We're going to keep that one. Here's another nice one. So we got two so far. This one's going to make a number three. Look at the size of that guy. Woo! Ow! That's a hard shell too. Awesome. So that's number three. This one is eh, probably too small, I think. Yep, too small. Okay, here is number, this is crab number four. There it is. Very nice one. That one is easy, about seven inches. Another female, and here's another male. This one is looks like another keeper. Oh yeah. All right. They have to be five and three quarter inch. Okay. So we have we have five in this pot. So let's go get the other one. All right. Once I pick up this pot inside the boat, we just head to head back to the harbor, okay? okay? Nice. Oops. There we go. Crap for lunch. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going forward. Your bait was all gone too. Yeah. This one is here. This one feels pretty heavy. Oh, this one feels heavy. That might be just a tide. Oh, oh wow. That one was on the top. That's a big female. Guys, we got so many in this one. 
Look at that. Oh, you gonna be able to lift it in the boat? I don't know if I can lift it in the boat. Holy, holy. Wow. You guys seeing this? Look at this. There must be 30 in there. There's a lot of female though. Yeah. Okay, this one is a keeper. Oh yeah. <clears throat> This one, the lid came off too. What's going on? That's weird. Wow, guys. Have you seen this many crab in one pot? That is incredible. This one might. Let's see. This one is a close one. This, this one's very, very close. Oh, mother! <laughs> yeah, that's a keeper. Right. Yeah, here we go. Okay. There's another nice one. Ooh. So that was uh, number. So we got six. No, seven. Another female. Seven. So this one's gonna be eight. Nine. So that's nine. Maybe 10. Sometimes they just come in, you know, they cooperate. Just like that, which is really nice. 10. This number 11. Yep. Yeah, easy, 11. You wanna keep them? What's it? Yeah. Looks okay? Yeah. Wow. Twelve? So that's one limit. That's just one pole. This might be number thirteen. Nope. Yeah, it does. Keeps them in there. Yep. Yeah, 13, 13. Fifteen. Woo! Maybe sixteen right here. There's one, there's two or three more. Oh, <laughs> no. A lot of small ones, undersized. There's two over here that might. 
That one's one of them. That one is definitely a, a keeper. Woo! <laughs> See, this guy just cooperates with you. He's very docile. Oh, yeah, easy. What is it? Did that say 14, 17? 17. 17. Something like that. I lost count, guys. He's a keeper. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. That is a male. Yeah, I can't. Uh, must be like 19. 18 or 19. One or the other. So we got about, we're about a couple of crabs short from having two limit, but that's okay. Yeah. Lynn, go ahead and start going. Put this sucker on here. We have OJ. There it is. Now we're going to take off all the inside, all the lungs, all the viscera. You want to break this apart, grab both ends, put your hand put your thumb in the middle and just crack it in half like that. It's portable, simple, simple to set up and it has a lot of power for a stove this small. The only thing I got to cook with is orange juice. I didn't bring my oil. That'll work great. Yeah, and I got, of course, my very favorite southern seasoning. It's actually, I cook fish with orange juice all the time. Yeah? It's really good. There. That's tilted at an angle. Let's get that. Wow. So basically, once the orange juice boil, I'm going to put in the crab and just cover it for about 15 minutes and then it's good. Now the uh, orange juice is boiling a little bit. You can see there, now we're gonna put in a little bit of seasoning. All that good right there. Screw it. <laughs> is it all gonna fit? That is a lot of crab there. So that's the first batch. Now we're going to cover it. And we're going to go 15 minutes. Okay, so that's where we're at. Halfway through right there. About another 8 more minutes. One way you can tell is um, if, the, if the crabs are done or not. It's going to turn from that kind of light orange color. And when it turns bright red. Like that, that's pretty close to it. That's how you can tell when the crabs are done. Okay guys, I think it is ready. So let's take it out and eat it. <laughs> the moment of truth. I'm hungry, it is lunchtime. Look at that. That looks good. The thing that's funny is the people... On YouTube or? No, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, you are saving a lot of money now. But Kim, now just like this here where she's getting $105 from the reading. Oh, look at that, guys. <laughs> about 30 minutes ago from the ocean. Really nice weather out here. Hardly any wind at all. Great time.
maybe one of these times we'll be able to do salmon steaks. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. The elbow is actually one of my favorite meat. Oh yeah, that little teeny piece. Mm -hmm. So good. Now, people don't know what they're missing when they buy picked crab because it doesn't it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. Something about food just tastes so much better outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that is the best part right there. Look oh, yeah. at that claw meat. Mm. To break off a claw, it's pretty easy. Grab one section. Go like that. Okay. Now, to crack that open, I don't have a nutcracker. So just, um, Go caveman on it and use your teeth. Like that. And then you have it all cracked up. Just gently peel it. There it is. That is delicious. Mm. Boy, that was sweet. That was unusually sweet. Those are these are the bottom ones that were in the orange juice. Ah. So one of my favorite parts is that elbow right there. And same thing, you just go caveman on it. You know, bite down on your teeth. That's one of the best part on a crab, is the elbow meat and the claw meat. Yep. Mmm, that's good. So for that part, I like to take off the claw. Okay. And just crack that open. Oh man. There is the claw meat right there. That is super good. Mm -hmm -hmm. Enjoying this day a lot. Well guys, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Right now is a really good time to come out here and catch some crabs on the Oregon coast. It's only gonna get better from now on. Three months. Yep, for the next three months it's going to be really good. And you can go to any bay. You don't have to come to Coos Bay. You know, they're all over the coast. Just grab your crab pot, some chicken, and uh, set it down there. It's pretty easy. There's a lot of access here on the coast. Many, Most bays have like crabbing pier you can crab from. Okay guys, I'll see you next time. Tight lines. <laughs>